My name is Mike Berna. Um, I'm a field service engineer with Ipsen and I've worked for Ipsen for around five years now and I wanted to talk with you guys about your new Titan that you've been interested in. First off, let's talk about the location of all the components of the furnace. The furnace comes in three parts. There's a control skid, the vessel, and the pumping skid. Depending on what options you buy, you can also get a water system that attaches to the furnace. We're going to go through and show you where everything is and how much space it takes up and the interconnects that are involved. This is the control skid. It has the strong arm with the, the interface for the operator that shows what values and inputs, temperatures, pressures are happening in the cycle. Um, the control cabinet's over here. It links everything through conduit or flux or wireway to the other components of the skid. Now we're going to talk about the control skid and the amount of space required for maintenance and installation. When opening the door you have around 34 inches of space from the edge of the skid to the edge of the door. It doesn't mean that that is the amount of space that you need. We need probably an additional foot and a half, two feet of space just to allow clearance for operating, getting inside, troubleshooting. It's hard to get inside if you're back up against the wall and trying to open doors. It's m much more difficult. The control skid connects to the vessel by a couple means. There's these flexi bar connections that send the power from the, the power supply or VRT to the power feed throughs on the vessel that go inside to the heating elements. Also in the back there's a wireway that runs all the interconnecting wires from the control skid to the vessel and to the pumping skid on the back. As you just saw, these are the work TCs. These allow the furnace to control the time at temperature off of the parts instead of the furnace. This guarantees that the parts are at temperature for the time that you do want. So during the cycle when the heat is on you can monitor the heat by temperature which is on the control screen or by the current that is showed on the VRT. Okay I'm now going to show you guys and demonstrate how the door opens and closes. First off on the home screen there is an open and closed door push button. When I press and hold open furnace door, the door will rotate and unlock on the autoclave. Once it hits the right location, it stops automatically. Now if I hit the open prep furnace door one more time, it will automatically swing open and stop at the open position. So now would be the time when you'd load your parts, put your thermocouples in, and verify that everything is correct before starting the cycle. As you can see, we've opened the door to show how much space is required when loading and unloading the furnace. Typically you want around 10 square feet to allow access for the loader to come in, the door to open, and just space to move around so it's not too crowded. So now let's imagine that we've already loaded the load, put the thermocouples in, and are prepared to run the cycle. All I have to do is come over here and press close furnace door. The furnace is going to automatically close. When it hits the closed position, it allows the door to rotate once again by hitting the close furnace door push button. The door will only rotate when pushing the button. So if you let off of the button, the door will stop rotating to protect anyone that is over by the door, like a pinch hazard or someone in their, with their hands in the wrong location. You can 
see the thermocouples, the blue plugs up here on the top. This is what controls the temperature inside the furnace. The one on the left is the control thermocouple. The one on the right is the overtemp thermocouple. The overtemp thermocouple is the maximum operating temperature of the furnace. This is the pressure manifold. This allows the furnace to monitor the pressure inside the furnace and the vacuum inside the furnace, depending on what set point and parameters are called out in the cycle. This is the pneumatic bank. This operates all the valves for the furnace pumping system and pressure relief systems. This is the pumping skid. The pumping skid removes all the gas from the furnace so you can process the material with no oxygen inside. This unit has a diffusion pump which allows for even further evacuation of the gases. It also has a booster pump, a roughing pump, and a holding pump to maintain the vacuum on the diffusion pump. So this is a three-stage system which can pump down in around five minutes from atmosphere to around 30 microns. Typically you're going to want to keep at least three to four feet of distance from the skid to allow access for forklifts for maintenance. Once all the skids are in place and the pumps are bolted to the vessel, it's time to run all the wires and interconnects that connect them back to the furnace. If you can see here, we have wire harness plugs that clip into junction boxes. This eliminates wiring issues and problems during startup because this is never unwired. It's simply just a plug. So this is the rear of the furnace. This has all the utility inlets and outlets. Also showing the gas blower for the cooling cycle. This is the nitrogen inlet. This gets plumbed from your accumulator tank from your gas accumulation system. This is the water inlet down here and drain right here. This ties into your open or closed loop water system to keep the furnace cool during operation. This is the furnace main disconnect. This is where the power from your facility comes in and connects to the furnace. Typically, customers mount through an LB or through the top with the conduit. Just like the front and the sides of the furnace, the back needs enough room for maintenance. For instance, the gas blower. The gas blower is fairly large and bulky, so you need a crane or a forklift to remove it. If you don't allow enough access for this, it can be a very hard feat. Once again, my name is Mike Berna, and I hope this gives you a better understanding of the Titan Furnace Line. If you have any other further questions or concerns, please contact us at Ipsen.